I feel like I'm part of a different club than just a tennis club. You know, not only am I a U.S. Olympian, but I'm also a, a gold medalist. And that always has a great ring. And I loved it so much when I was playing, and I'd be introduced as that. That always uh, had a special feeling because I think everybody in, that loves sports loves the Olympics. And it was so... Uh, Unbelievable to me that I even made the team and then let alone to get the, a medal and then get the gold was, uh, was just the best. I remember um, being on the podium trying to tell myself not to cry. Like, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. And I remember just keep repeating that to myself because um, it is overwhelming when you get up there and you think it's, it's all fun and it's, you think it's all happy and then depending on your personality, um, it can be more emotional. And it started to get a little emotional for me, but um, most of it was shock. Uh, most of it was, um, you know, kind of just frozen in, is this real? You know, and it's hard when it's your first big um, award or first big accomplishment that you're, I was just like, I, I think all the pictures I've seen, I'm much like, oh my gosh, <laughs> is this real? I, I couldn't get over that, that feeling. I literally went home and didn't do anything for like three or four days. It was it was a time to just like, oh my gosh, I was fried. Uh, happy fried, obviously, yeah. but still, it, it took everything out of me. Getting through the semifinals so I could guarantee myself a medal was the was the most the biggest challenge because that was the first Olympics they decided to play off for third and fourth. So even if you made it to the semis, you weren't guaranteed a medal. And then in the semis, I had to play Mary Jo, who was uh, my best friend. It was tough to show too much emotion, and obviously then all the coaches are neutral, and we were staying together. So that that part wasn't very fun. It definitely changed my life because then every time I then was going into a tournament or major, it was like, well, why not? I can do this. But it still took me a little bit of time to totally convince myself mm -hmm. of it. Um, it was a great first step. I did feel some pressure the next year. 97 was a little bit of a tougher year for me, um, but it was one that I eventually learned to be proud of because, okay, now I'm good enough. I deserve this pressure. I got to accept it. Um, but it definitely, I wasn't playing under the radar anymore and I wasn't the one trying to go up. I was definitely the one now, okay, now let's see what you can do. It feels like a different life. Life. When I look back to those kind of times, it, it almost in some ways feels like a different person. Enjoy every moment. I was so excited about everything in Atlanta, from the village to going to other events, and, and I think that's one of the reasons I played well. If you sequester yourself and treat it like a regular tennis tournament, it's going to feel like that. And this is one of those rare opportunities players get to meet other athletes, compare stories, cheer for um, their compatriots, and the opening ceremonies in all the Olympics I've played are the three biggest highlights of my whole life. Obviously, besides kids and all that, but it was, I'll never forget those moments. You have to go for those things. Those, those to me were so special and it's been amazing. In 96, um, of course being in Atlanta, it was a huge moment. Muhammad what? Ali lighting the torch. On the field, no one knew what was happening. Yep. And to see him up there, I can still see it in my mind. Like, oh my yep. gosh, lighting the torch. I had no idea what we were in for. And that was the single, one of the most incredible moments. The fans were going nuts when we entered the stadium and we felt it. It was so eye-opening for me in 2000. That was the moment for me that I realized Venus and Serena are way bigger than the sport of tennis. The U.S. team, we went in there together and we marched in together and once we got on the field, they were absolutely mopped by every other athlete. I'll never forget that part of the, the opening sermons in Sydney. Atlanta and Beijing were actually my most favorite memories. Um, and you know, you those you'll never get at a Grand Slam. 2008, um, we were told that from the U.S. teams in Beijing, we were going to line up a little bit early. They then took us to the wrestling center where we were all waiting. It was fantastic because we were in other countries. We were going around to all the other athletes. They asked us to sit down, and President Bush Sr. and Jr. came in. And it was a moment of, like, everybody went nuts. And those two went around and shook everyone's hand, looked him in the eyes, spoke to him personally. To see that moment, it was, it was awesome. I think that the people in, inside tennis, they're very knowledgeable about the sports and the players and the personalities and the achievements. Um, but I think that for people outside of tennis, it brings you into a different kind of um, maybe fan base or different reactions. And I was always told this growing up, like, you're so fortunate in tennis. You have four huge tournaments a year. Think about if you were an ice skater or a gymnast. And, and so we're really spoiled where every four years we actually have five of those events. It's, it's a very cool thing to have and be able to say, my kids love it. So every year for the first grade Olympics, I go in with my medal. And most of the, they're six and seven, they have no way, they don't really get it. So, but my kids think it's cool. <laughs>